So for the recording, I was just uh, recalling what, uh, what a sigma model is, where the, the B field is a two form, and in topologically non-trivial situations, um, the two form is only defined locally, and in order to um, have still a well-defined coupling, there needs to be data amended on um, higher, on the intersections of these open sets and higher intersections. And yes, no, this is just bosonic sigma model, just, just the very simplest case. And so this data that has to be amended consists of uh, gauge potentials on the double intersections of open sets and there is a, the, they are related by an equality like this. So the difference of two between two locally defined B fields on the intersection has to be um, equal to the derivative of these gauge potentials. Okay, now on the, on the triple intersections, um, one can now um, uh, consider these gauge fields, ij, jk, and ik, and they again have to be related, and there has to be functions on triple intersections, and they have to be taken to be u1 valued in order to emphasize that we have a u1 gauge theory here, and um, the relation between those and the, the gauge potentials is um, an equality like this, so we take d log of these functions, and this picks up the failure of the A as being a, a, a check co-cycle, and then there is a check co-cycle condition for these functions, so C um, have to satisfy the, the usual set check co-cycle condition, so KL is equal to CJ, KL, C, um, I, J, L. Okay, so this is the full data, and if this is provided, then the coupling term can again be um, written down in a well-defined uh, way, no matter what the topology of M is. So, one can uh, make two observations here. So the first observation is that even when the B fields are only locally defined, from this equation, it follows that the derivative of the B fields give a globally well-defined three-form H, because on the difference, it's, a di it's exact, so the difference is also closed. And um, the other po thing is that here from at the bottom of the data, from this U1-valued function, we get a class in the second check cohomology of the manifold with values in the sheaf of U1-valued functions, and this is isomorphic to degree three integral cohomology. So this data that we have here has sort of contains all the aspects that we want to have, local B fields, glo globally defined H fluxes, and this um, sort of class here. Okay. So now, also by the work of Christoph Kavetsky and also by the work of our Australian colleagues, uh, Michael Murray and Alan Carey, we have um, a, a way to formulate or reformulate this data in more geometrical language, and that's called a bundle gerb. So I will not recall now what a bundle gerb is. For those who know it, they will recognize it. So there is a geometrical structure called a bundle gerb. Oh yeah, thanks. Bundle gerb with connection. And this can be used as a replacement of this sort of complicated data. So any of these bundle gerb has what it's known a dix miedua d class. Which is precisely this class. Okay, so now I was planning to do this arrow here. So it's this class. And on this other side has a curvature. The connection on this bundle gerb has a curvature. This curvature is precisely its three form.
And the third thing that such bundle jar has is something called a survey solonomy. So just like the line bundles with connection have a notion of parallel transport along path, bundle jobs with connection have parallel transport and holonomy along surfaces. And in this case, this well-defined surface holonomy, say around the world sheet, is precisely this coupling term. So this gives a coupling. All right. So an example where this topological considerations are relevant is the WZW model. So in that model, M is a Lie group, possibly non-simply connected, so there is highly non-trivial topology, and it is well known from the work of Witten about such models that the B field in that case is not globally defined a two form. Still, the, the H flux is a, is, is a well-defined three form. So now T duality in this sort of simple context is a way how to tell when two such um, string backgrounds gives the same quantum field theory. And um, so let me explain this in, um, sort of, or let me explain the classical picture of this, which is um, presented by, or made of by the Buscher rules. Okay. Um, so I wanted to, uh, okay, let's, let's stay here. So the Buscher rules are um, made for a particular form of such triples, namely when the manifold um, has um, a torus part and otherwise it consists of some open set of Rn, or not Rn, but Rs, some other dimension. The metric uh, can be rather arbitrary, has to be invariant under this Tn um, transformation, and there can be some B field, also invariant. And then the Buscher rules tell how this gets transformed into another of such triples with a dual metric and a dual B field. So I will not write down all the Buscher rules equations, they are sort of complicated. The only thing that has to be known about them at, at now is that the, the formulas for G hat and B hat um, mix B and G on the original side. So the G does not, the G hat does not just depend on the G and the B does not just depend on the B hat does not just depend on the B, but they are mixed. And this mixture is a very complicated way, and it's not really, yeah, it's a complicated way, <laughs> okay. And um, so what I want to talk about today is the following thing. So this, this sort of initial data for the Buscher rules has sort of two simplifications that I want to avoid or overcome. Namely, the first simplification is that here we take like a trivial torus bundle over um, a coordinate patch or a flat space time. And here we just have a B field and not the full bundle gerb connection data. So actually, we want to go to triples of the form where we have a torus bundle, principal torus bundle over some manifold X metric on E on the total space and a bundle gerb, G, on the total space. So this must be the full sigma model data that has to be considered. But as far as I can see, it's not really clear what to put on the dual side of this. Yeah. Yes, it's invariant. Um, yes, I think so, yeah. So usually the B is also be assumed to be t invariant, but one can show that this is sort of redundant. If, if one has B and the dual B hat and the Buscher rules are satisfied, the invariance is, is implied by the Buscher rules. No, it's strictly, in, it's invariant, yeah, yeah, it's in, invariant, right? Not, not basic or so, it's invariant under the TN notion. Here, yeah. A smooth torus principal bundle over smooth, everything is smooth, I'm not considering any singularities or anything else. So this is a puzzle, right? It's a puzzle, what to put on the right-hand side of this, 
um, uh, of this diagram. And so there are sort of, in order to solve this puzzle, we look at pieces that are already known or sort of limits in which uh, the answer is already known. So one of these pieces is um, the, the, the Busher rules. So how can the Busher rules help to handle this, this general situation? Well, obviously, if I look locally on this general situation, right? So this is the first thing, if I look locally, I can choose uh, an open set of X such that the bundle trivializes then I can choose a trivialization of that bundle, it's called phi, so then the bundle just looks like boros, so this is a trivialization, the restriction of the bundle to this, and then I can uh, hope that this bundle trap trivializes. Right, so the starting M is now the E here, I just, um, refrained from calling the total space M, but I should have called it M maybe, right. So M is always the space where metric and bundle gerb are defined. Now it's E, I, I changed the letter because, because I want to emphasize that now M is a torus bundle over some other manifold X, which sort of does not have direct physical interpretation. Okay, so I was about to explain that locally we can like trivialize all of the structure. So if I put, uh, make the, small, the U small enough, then the bundle trivializes, and then in good situations at least, well, it has to be taken as an assumption, I can then also trivialize the bundle gerb when I restrict to um, along this trivialization. So let's um, formulate it like this. I can pull back this bundle gerb, it's a geometric object now, I can pull it back and then trivialize it, which means, just putting this notation, that it becomes equivalent to the original situation where the gerb is just a globally defined two-form. So here, a globally defined two-form appears as sort of the, the remaining part of the connection under a trivialization. Globally on U times Tn, right? So this is where this lives. I pull it back to here and then I trivialize, so I'm, I'm having a two-form just like here, right? This two-form is also defined here. It has, has these both components. Okay, and now I have everything I need. I have uh, this trivial torus bundle. I have a B field. Well, in the metric, I just restrict and I have the metric. And then I can apply the Busher rules. So in this local situation, the Busher rules tell me what to do it. So that's the point of, so in, from the general point of view, Busher rules deal with the local situation. But there are some problems involved into it. Now I can like, could like think, okay, then now I compute the dual metrics and dual B fields and then glue again together on the dual side. But that doesn't work, right? This was like um, uh, found out very early, like just, just, just after Bush published his rules, there was a paper of um, Alvarez and Alvarez Gourmet and other people who, who, who noticed that it doesn't work. The gluing on the dual side doesn't work. And that's this famous topology change in T-duality. I think that's like the main point where why mathematicians become interested in this because there is there there has to be some rule how the topology of this TN bundle changes under T duality. Okay, so what's another part of this puzzle? One can do the following thing. I can like simplify the data and instead of the whole bundle gerb, just consider um, the curvature, the three form. So I can simplify this to the situation where I have the bundle and I can for forget the metric and just keep the three curvature of the bundle gerb and then try to find out sort of Busher rules. And this has been done in this work of um, uh, Bauknecht, uh, Efslin and Mattei. They have like figured out how these rules work and they like, can produce um, a dual torus bundle and the dual H flux on the other side. There are some rules. And another situation that's, that, that's gonna be important later, or just in a second, is um, we can like do the opposite, um, also um, forget the metric, but from the bundle gerb not keep the curvature, sort of not the differential information, but only the topological information, the Stix-Medua D class. So I can go to, um, the torus bundle 
and just this class of the bundle chirp. And this um, is done in this context of topological t-duality. Topological t-duality. And um, I will refer to this paper of Bunke, Rumpf, and Schick in 2005 about this. And I will now try to um, recall how topological t-duality works. Okay. Yes, so there is like a Schoenwald theory for gerbs, right? So if you go to, to real valued cohomology here from the sticks me d class, then it's represented by the curvature form, yes. There is a diagram, yes. Any further questions so far? Okay, so let me try to summarize what topological t-duality is. So the most important thing here to say is the, or to explain is the notion of a t-duality correspondence. So I guess you, most of you have seen this. So uh, the, the, the point is we consider a diagram in which um, two torus bundles live over the same x. So the bundle and the dual bundle, the E hat, and so over these bundles, so each of these bundles comes with a bundle gerb. So I'm using this letter G here, but uh, in fact, I mean only the dix d class now, but I, so I forget the connection of the gerb, but I'm still using the letter G because it's easier. And so now the, the point of a t-duality correspondence is to explain one, two such pairs of a bundle and a gerb have to be considered t-dual to each other. And the point is, uh, one has to go to this correspondence space, the fiber product of the bundles over the base manifold. So let's say um, here's a projection, here are the projections to the factors. This, then we can pull back the bundle drops to correspondence space, so here's Here are pullback diagrams. And then we need an isomorphism here, D. Okay, so that's the idea of a t-duality correspondence. Now the important point is that these bundle gerbs, they are geometrical objects forming a category, not just a set of classes or so, they're forming a category. So it makes sense to say that there is an isomorphism between these bundle gerbs. And now there is a condition on this isomorphism the so-called Poincaré condition. On this isomorphism D. Okay. So in short, the Poincaré condition is saying, if I go to an open subset of X and trivialize everything, trivialize the bundles, trivialize the gerbs, then this isomorphism D becomes an isomorphism between trivial gerbs under the trivializations. And isomorphisms between trivial gerbs are the same as U1 bundles. That sort of follows from how these gerbs are defined in the morphism. And the condition is that this U1 bundle to which this corresponds has to be the Poincaré bundle over the torus fibers here. So I'm going to explain it. I'm, not, I'm just summarizing it, what, what comes next. So these are torus bundles. So here this bundle is, uh, so this correspondence space is a bundle for the double torus, T, T2n, and there is a Poincaré bundle over this. And this has to correspond to D. So this is the idea. So now I'm making this more precise. Yeah. Absolutely. They form a, form a two category. Right now we don't need this the two morphisms. They play a role when, for example, I want to explain 
when um, two such correspondences are equivalent. So I want to like, go to the set of equivalence classes. Then I would have another of these diagrams. And then I need sort of morphisms in the vertical direction. And then I need a two morphism between the D and the other D. So it is relevant for the purposes of this talk. I'm sort of not using this. Yes, they, they form, actually they the full, full answer is that they form a stack over manifold. So for each X, I can consider all these correspondences. And for each X, I get a bi-category. The whole thing is a, a two stack, a stack of bi-categories, a chief of bi-categories. Okay, so let me explain this Poincaré condition. So the idea is that we go to an open subset of X over which both um, bundles trivialize. So we have trivializations like before of E and on the dual side, similar trivialization that we had. And then um, according trivializations of the gerbs. So T is a trivialization of the pullback of G along phi. And here, because we have, we have um, forgotten the connections, I'm just not putting any B. So I is just the trivial gerb, just no information, nothing. The IB is the trivial gerb equipped with B as a connection, right? So it's like when you have the trivial line bundle, the connections on the trivial line bundles are just one forms, and the connections on the trivial gerbs are just two forms. So this is this is how every gerb looks locally. Just the topological information is, is gone locally, and only the connection has some remaining information, like a covariant derivative, if you want. The I is just the trivial gerb. So here we are in a setting where we forget all the connections. We have just the bundle gerbs, no connections. Just the trivialization. Yes, this is just the trivialization of the bundle gerb. So can you say it again? Mm, yeah, it's sort of not, like usually I keep it. I mean, at some point you m might want to go to equivalence classes, but at this point we don't have to. Index by B, yes. Yes. So this just means T is a trivialization of the gerb. It's a morphism or an isomorphism to the trivial gerb. No, 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 it's, uh, it's, it's a bundle gerb, but a trivial one. Like, you know, for example, when you, in terms of this data here, <laughs> It just consists, you take an open cover and the function C is constantly equal to one and A and B are zero. That's what the trivial chirp is. Really the tri like the trivial bundle. There's just one over each manifold. Okay, and on the dual side, it's the same. Now, I, now we have trivialized everything. And now we can look at some composite morphism here, for example, so like like this, if you start with the, I'm, I'm sketch, it, it's a bit sketchy, but I hope it transfers the idea. So I take the inverse of the trivialization. Then here is this correspondence isomorphism D. It gets me to the dual side. And then I'm using the trivialization, the pullback to, to the correspondence space. Become trivial. So this way, using these trivializations, we have transformed this isomorphism D into an isomorphism between trivial gerbs hat. Well, I, you know, I as a trivial gerb, it's like the same. I can put a hat, but <laughs> for symmetry reasons. Yeah. No, it's just the trivial gerb is always the same. Um, and as I said earlier, like isomorphisms between trivial gerbs correspond to principal U1 bundles. And we just, the Poincaré condition requires that this corresponds to the Poincaré bundle. So now this is over, let's consider this is over U times Tn times Tn. 
and um, the Poincaré bundle lives over Tn times Tn. So uh, let, let me rather denote this as 2n. So we require that this corresponds to the pullback to this 2Tn factor of the Poincaré bundle. The Poincaré bundle is just a canonical Uban bundle over the double torus T2n. For example, it can be characterized by telling what the first churn class is. So the first churn class of this Poincaré bundle is the following. It's a sum goes to n to half of the dimension. Then you pull back, now this is on T2n. So you have two n projections to the T to the torus factor, to the circle factors. You pull back the canonical first churn class from the direction i, take the cup product with the canonical first churn class from the factor i plus n. So this is a one, this is a one um, class, another one class, cup product is a two class, so this is a churn class, of the deg degree two class, on T2n. That's a Poincaré bundle, it's some bundle, so it has appeared um, also uh, earlier to this work, in the work of Hull, for example, in the work of, um, of Hori, it played an important role, so it has appeared in this context of T-duality before, also in the writings of Matai. But here Bunke and Schick sort of transferred this into this very sort of precise topological condition, what it means to be topologically T-dual. Um, there is some relation to the symplectic geometry. Yes, directly, I'm not sure. I mean, the, um, the curvature of this Poincaré bundle, that's supposed to be a symplectic form, yes. Sorry? So some constant factor, um, I don't know. Um, N equals one, yeah, yes. Yes, yes, right. Okay. So let me make a, let, let's pause for a second and let me make some remarks about this, yeah. David. Right, so, okay, right, to be more precise, the condition is there exist trivializations such that this isomorphism corresponds to this bundle. Obviously, it's not true for all trivializations because if I change a trivialization, I will pick up um, some some other semans here. So there exist trivializations, right? Thanks. So I wanted to make some further um, remarks about this. Um, so for me, so this work on topological t-duality is like really important because it, it clarifies a couple of points which are good to say. So the first point is that T-duality in this picture is not presented as a transformation that takes you from one string background to another background, but rather as a relation on the space of all backgrounds, right? So a, a, a topological background consisting of bundle and gerb, and another one, and this defines when these two have to be considered T-dual. It's not telling us how to get from one side to the other side. In fact, already the, already the work of Matai and Bauknecht here um, revealed the fact that some backgrounds do not have any t-duals, right? They called this the mysteriously missing t-duals. And then there was this famous work of Matai and Rosenberg, who um, used the non-commutative geometry and non-commutative torus bundles to provide these missing backgrounds. But that's something that I do not want to do today. So for me, it's completely okay if some of these t-duality, t toroidal string backgrounds, if they don't just don't have a dual, then it's fine. And actually the work of Bunkerumpf Schick also revealed that one of these backgrounds can have many different non-equivalent duals, and that there is a group acting on the possible t-duals. It's a discrete group, so this, tel this is telling us it's only sort of, it's only, um, it, it's only a matter of the topology, right, that these sort of, these obstructions and these multi-valued T-duality transformations appear. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's a good question. It, it's it's not. I think it's not motivated. It has no relation to the Busher rules. I mean, that's something that I will like explain in a second what the relation is. But I don't think that it was known to to Bunker, Rumpf, and Schick. The motivation for this condition is so. First of all, sort of reproduce what um, what Bauknecht, Epstein, and Mattei did on the level of forms. Sort of enhances to topology. That's and that 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 worked. And then the other motivation that I also wanted to mention in my remarks now is that um, that there is this um, transformation of uh, Ramon Ramon fields from one side to the other side, which mathematically are described by um, K theory classes. And this has to do with this Fourier Mokai transformation that's um, uh, in this discussion of Hori, for example, how the D brains go from one side to another side. And one of the goals of Bunker and Schick's work was to make this precise. But K theory is, is really a topological thing. So first they had to make the, topolo the, the, the topological basics precise. And then they proved that if this condition is used, then there is a well-defined um, Fourier Mokai transformation in twisted K theory from the twisted K theory of this torus, where the gerb is a twist, to the twisted K theory of this torus with this twist. So um, Bauknecht, Epstein, and Mattei did this on the level of a twisted Deram cohomology using these H's, these three forms. And the justification for this condition is that it worked in the topological, in the full topological picture. Well, twisted Deram means that you, that you add, to, to take D plus H as a differential. Right. Yeah, I also wanted to mention that there is a relation to higher gauge theory that will also be relevant in Christian Seemann's talk on Thursday, namely the fact that if I look at equivalence classes of T-duality correspondences over X and try to classify them, I try to find a, a cohomological interpretation of this set of correspondences over X, then there is um, a two group, the T-duality two group, Noted TD. The non abelian two group, such that the non abelian cohomology of X as values in this two group precisely corresponds to equivalence classes of these um, T duality correspondences. So there is a nice sort of um, explanation in this higher gauge theory context about this. Or what? No, it's not discrete, but I, mm, let's talk about this later, okay? I, I, it's not that important for the talk and I have to sort of see that I'm uh, getting, that I'm getting on. Okay, so next I want to. <laughs> is equal to the set of equivalence classes of T-duality correspondences over X. So now I come to the main part of this talk, namely I want to, so I was saying, we want to know what this is, and these are the known parts, and um, what I explained there is the last line, topological t-duality, and so what I want to do is upgrade this purely topological picture to a differential topological picture, so I don't want to add connections and metrics here to this side. And that's what I call geometric t-duality. So. so geometric t-duality is meant as sort of opposite or an enhancement of just purely topological t-duality. Okay, so we want to involve the metrics and the gerbs con gerb connections into this thing. And the main uh, tool is here, the usual Kaluza-Klein consideration. We have um, a metric G on the total space of a principal bundle, so we can sort of split it into its usual Kaluza-Klein components, which means first that there is a connection, an ordinary bundle connection, omega, on E and on E hat, but I'll just write for one side, the other side is, the other thing is a metric on the base, yeah, one, connection omega on the torus, so 
I'm transferring this the G metric on E into its Kaluza Klein components. So it gives me a connection on the bundle, a metric on the base, I call that G prime, metric on the base base on X, and there is a third component that sort of in the literature I have seen is always ignored or putting trivial, namely it's a family of scalar products on the Lie algebra of the torus, which is just Rn, so it's a family, Hx metric on Rn, fam par parameterized by points in the base manifold X. But this is like metrics on t total spaces of bundles correspond one to one to this data. It's a one to one correspondence. I'm not, sorry? Well, that's a connection, right? The connection gives the horizontal distribution. The connection. That's true for every connection. So here is no condition. So this is just a connection in the usual. Principle. It's a principal bundle, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's everything is principal. Everything is principal. Just principal bundle. So the omega is a omega is a one form on the total space. So the main solution that I present, it's very simple. And if you look at it, it's very simple. So the main point of what I'm proposing to do is to consider a certain two form on this correspondence space. Uh, let's call it rho. And it depends on this connection omega I get from the metric here and the connection omega hat I get from the metric here. And it's very simple. It's just the, the wedge product of these two connections. Um, so recall that when there are connections on torus bundles, so they are Lie algebra valued, so they are Rn valued. So in order to take the wedge product, I just I, I need a scalar product in order to contract the values. And I just take the standard scalar product. It's, it's as simple as it can be. So this is a two form on correspondence space. Okay, a two form on correspondence space. And all, so what I'm proposing is, to um, um, add a trivial gerb here with this connection. So recall that the connections on trivial gerbs are just two forms. We have a two form, so we have a trivial gerb with this connection. And then I just require that the correspondence isomorphism is now an isomorphism of gerbs with connection, a connection preserving isomorphism. So G has a connection, G hat has a connection, and this trivial gerb has this connection. It makes sense to require as a condition that this D is connection preserving. Yeah. G prime is the metric on the base. Metric G prime on X, sorry. Okay, so this is the first part of this um, enhancement of topological T-duality to geometric T-duality at this two form and require D to be connection preserving. I take it to be Riemannian. And I haven't looked at other signatures, honestly. That I don't know. Um, in, you mean in this Kaluza Klein correspondence, uh, there I, it doesn't matter. So there, whatever the signature is, is the signature of this metric downstairs. That doesn't matter. In the whole discussion here, I'm not sure. I haven't looked at it. I'm, so here is everything is Riemannian. As I said, as simple as possible, as simple as possible. No, rho is not closed, no. Um, so now we need a differential or geometric version of this Poincaré condition. So let's look at this. So everything here makes um, still sense. Oh no, I forgot one thing. So, I, so the first thing is what this, is that this D is connection preserving, but so we only have used the omega so far. So what about G prime and the H? And so there are new conditions and we just require that the G prime is the same on both sides. Okay, that's a sort of a reasonable condition. There's just one metric on X. 
And the metrics age, like on the fibers, so here we built in a significant feature of T-duality, namely that the radius is inverted. So I'm writing, I'm writing down an equation like this, where the age, the one to the minus one just means that you consider age as a matrix, as a positive definite symmetric matrix and invert it. Also very simple. Okay, so these are like new conditions here. And now the remaining thing is the, the differential refinement of the um, Poincaré condition. So everything here still makes sense. We go to an open subset. We trivialize the bundles. We trivialize the gerbs. But now the gerbs carry connections. We had ignored them in the first run. But now they have connections. And this means that under the trivializations, we get B fields here. B and B hat. So now these trivial gerbs are equipped with connections. Okay, fine. And I'm adding them here. We're doing the same thing. So there is a correction now because D, we added this trivial gerb here. So I have to add it here. So here is this I rho omega omega hat. And I'm just you from the left. Tensor, it doesn't matter much, but the tensor is from the right is right after G hat. No, it's just on one side. Yeah, it's sort of unsymmetric if you want. Yes, it's just on one side. <laughs> There's just one two form on this correspondence space, right? And so, but if I put it on both sides, I could as well uh, not putting it at all because it would cancel on both sides. I put two things on both sides. Let, let's just accept it for a moment like this. <laughs> sort of arguing later that it's okay. And so we have also, so here the, the connections just add. So we have something like this. And the condition is now that this again, now it's, it's an isomorphism between trivial gerbs with connections and such isomorphism corresponds to a line bundle with connection, U1 bundle with connection. And we just use the canonical connection on the Poincaré bundle. So this is a geometric Poincaré condition. Equip everything with connections, use these metrics, form this isomorphism and require that, it's, uh, that it corresponds to the Poincaré bundle with connection. No further, no further thing um, to be done here. Sorry? They add, yes. Right. Okay. So now let me present a picture how to how to think about this. How I think about this. So the picture is as follows. So there is this geometric T duality. Which is made of these geometric t-duality correspondences that I just explained. And then what one can do is go back to the old situations. Let me explain this first. So we can first forget the metric. Forget all the metrics involved. And then I have two choices. I can either for forget the gerb connections, forget gerb connections, then I arrive at the old picture of topological t-duality. Okay. And the other option I have is I can sort of look at these bundle drop connections and only keep their curvatures. So keep curvatures. So these three forms, the H fluxes. And then I'm, uh, so this is like obvious because I have just here, I've just added structure. If I remove all the connection, I'm just back in the old topological t-duality situation. It, it is a constraint. What I mean is if we just forget all these additional things, then I'm ha exactly having the old conditions back. 
the condition that I require that the connection is matched here is a it is a constraint. Yes, it's a constraint. By this arrow, I just mean sort of do not consider connections, and then also do not consider the constraints imposed by the connections. So I'm just saying that you get back the old topological T duality. Or let me rephrase it again. If we have geometric T duality, then the underlying topological structure satisfies topological T duality. That's what I mean. So we can also keep the curvatures, and I claim that we get ex precisely this um, T duality with H fluxes by invented by Bauknecht and Matai and Efslin. So T duality with H flux. So, so we get this here, and I claim that we get this, and I also claim that we get the local situations determined by the Buscher rules, but this is like another, another strand, because for the Buscher rules, I must not forget the metric. But what I must do is I look locally, locally, and I claim that we get the Buscher rules. So let me, so I really claim that the, so you have, might have noticed that in this, on this board here, where I defined geometric T duality, I did not use the Buscher rules or, or impose them. They follow automatically. So let me, let me try to explain why. So how do the Buscher rules follow? They follow from this differential Poincaré condition. Um, well, this looking locally is precisely what we did here. We, we go to an open set, trivialize, and see. And so the point is when we look at this isomorphism that has to be has to correspond to this Poincaré bundle with its connection, and if we see what let's translate this into the differential forms, and the translation gives the following result. Um, so it's an equation on this um, u times t to the two n. So there is this term coming from the uh, right-hand side, and there is also this, um, this form, omega, omega hat. On the left-hand side, there is B, and this relation between gerb morphisms and bundles are saying that the curvature of the bundle and the connection of the connection has to compensate the difference between the two two forms. So that's why here the curvature of the Poincaré bundle comes in. So this is an equation, let's call it star, that follows from the geometric Poincaré condition. And I claim, but unfortunately running a bit out of time, I claim that this equation star implies the Buscher rules and also implies this e the corresponding, the, and implies the rules that sort of govern this T duality with H flux. So I want to talk about this. So let me maybe point out how this works with the Buscher rules, but I, don't have, let me check for a second. Yeah, it's, 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 a cal it's still a calculation. Some you have to mess around with these forms, split into the coordinates, use this kalusa klein theory, transform these, these connections omega back into the matrix G from which they correspond, use what the curvature of the Poincaré bundle is, and then this equation like implies plainly the Buscher rules. The Buscher rules for in this local situation, right? The Buscher rules, the Buscher rules only are make only sense locally, right? So it only makes sense if space-time has this product form, and locally it has after trivialization. That's on the base, exactly. Well, the, the G hat prime comes from, from the metric on E hat. That's a question. Yes. Yes, so, the, right. So we have sort of transformed the Buscher rules into a, a rule for the matrix on the base X, a rule for the matrix in the fibers, and 
sort of an equation of two forms that can be sort of massaged into the Boucher rules equation for the mixed components. So in the end, the full Boucher rules are there without having told them. So in a sense, they follow from topological t-duality. Right? I have not made any considerations that led me to the Boucher rules directly. Maybe except of like inventing this two form here, but the, this is really a very natural choice. <laughs> I mean, there is not any other two form on this correspondence space one could easily write down. But that's the only choice I've, almost the only choice I've made. Okay. And the Boucher rules are implied by this. Okay, so let me add another interesting thing here in this diagram. Namely, there is another thing one can do. Namely, not forget the metric completely, but only keep the connection in Kaluza Klein theory and just forget the metric on the base and the fiber metric. So there is another arrow. Let me use this color. Um, so here is just. Um, get the G prime and HX and keep omegas. So this sort of gives me something that gets rid of this Riemannian differential geometry and only keeps the connections. Okay, so this deserves to be called differential t-duality. So it's another flavor, not sort of not taking care of the complete picture, but only a part of this picture. And this differential t-duality has appeared also in this work of Christian Seemann and Kim, and they have proved that, well, so one can at least interpret it in this way, that this corresponds to the differential homology of this two group, right? So every two group has a cohomology and a differential cohomology. And so there is a hat for the differential, of this two group. And then we are here in this differential t-duality picture. So I'm just mentioning this here because of the following fact. So recall that topological t-duality is equivalent to this ordinary cohomology of the two, ordinary cohomology of the two group. And of course, there is a forgetful map from differential to ordinary cohomology. And in this very particular version of differential cohomology, so there is one of these adjustments, um, this map for getting the connection data is surjective. So I prove this in the paper, it's just a very simple calculation, but I couldn't find the result anywhere. So this map is surjective. So this is surjective, this is a bijection. And here, this arrow is also subjective because the data of this connection on the base and the connection on the fiber is completely independent of this connection on the bundle. I can just, if I just have, if I just have the omega, I can take any g prime and any h, and then I have the and I have then I have the metric on e. So I can always choose any, make any choice, and go back. So this is also subjective. So the map from geometric to topological t-duality is subjective, which means nothing else that every topological t-duality correspondence can be enhanced to a geometric t-duality correspondence. Right? So I'm not putting any additional constraints, and this also delivers me lot of, lots of examples. So everything that was in topological t-duality earlier will be in geometric t-duality um, using some connections and metrics. And I have looked at this at some examples, and um, the expectation is exactly um, sort of, it, it works, it seemed to work. So now people should look at more examples. So the first example I was looking at is this original situation where topology change was observed by Alvarez. So that was a situation where one takes a hop vibration, which is um, a circle bundle over the two sphere, then I need a metric, I take the round metric, G3, the round metric on the three sphere, and the zero B field. So this was 
in this paper from 84, 80, oh sorry, well, don't recall. In this paper, this was the situation considered there. And so there was trivialized, locally trivialized the hop vibration, and then the Bush rules were applied, and then they noticed that the metrics do not glue to an, the dual metrics, do not give a new metric on, on S3. But um, T duality will send this to the trivial um, S1 bundle over the two sphere and the product metric. And some complicated, okay, some expression. So there is an expression for this gerb. Now it's a non-trivial gerb. It's, it's a cup product. So let me just, I make it very small so that you can read it anyway. So you, you take here the, the projection to the two sphere, pull back the hop vibration, then it's a bundle over the space, takes a cup product with the canonical U1 valued function on S1. So like this. So there is an expression for this gerb. And because the hop vibration has a canonical connection, and connections are preserved under the cup product, so this gerb carries a canonical connection, and now I can prove that this sort of expectation um, satisfies these rules of geometric t-duality, so it works. So geometric t-duality gives the correct answer to this situation. And I've also looked at some other example. One can let take the hop vibration, Also the round metric, and then not the trivial B field, but a non-trivial gerb over the three sphere. The three sphere carries the basic gerb that realize the canonical three class on the three sphere. And this is self-dual. And this also works in geometric t-duality. So if you put this and again the same thing on the dual side, all the rules of geometric t-duality are satisfied. Okay, so maybe one minute. Another interesting one, in, interesting thing one can do, just wanted to mention this, is now to, get, to go back into this very local formalism here, where the gerbs are defined by local two forms, one forms, and functions. So if I'm doing this now on both sides of this geometric t-duality, then the picture is as follows. On the level of open sets, I get locally defined metrics and B fields on the dual side too. Let's see. Then on the double intersection, so this is intersection count one, intersection count two, I get transition functions of the bundles. So let's call I, I, A, I, J, I had I, J. So each bundle has its transition functions on double intersections. And also I get these A's from the gerb connection on double intersections. I had IJ. And then on triple intersections, so these transition, transition functions, I can take them real valued. Even if they are torus bundles, I can lift the transition functions to real values. And then I have to take um, winding numbers into account. So if I take this transition functions real valued, then on triple intersections, they will give me integers, winding numbers, so I, I need them to, so there is just the choice I can uh, make. And then there are these C I J K S from the gerb. So this is how the full local description of, of um, a geometric string background looks like. Torus bundles and full metrics and full gerb data the what is this? The transition functions of the torus bundle. So I have a non-trivial torus bundle, so I have open sets on the base, I have transition functions. Right here. Usually they are U1 valued, but I can just, any U1 valued function on small sets, I can lift to real valued functions. But then on triple intersections, they, they won't satisfy the co-cycle condition anymore because these lifts are arbitrary. But what I get is integers on triple intersections. And these are these ones. I can simply do this. In this Delin cohomology business, this is like usual thing that, that the transition functions are real valued and that are integers to compensate this difference.
Well, these are, yeah, so, sorry. The, in, in TN, yeah, yeah, they are, they are, so they are, okay, we write it. They are RN valued on the double intersections. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. So now uh, let me conclude. So the main point was that locally, so if I just look on the open sets locally, that the relation between metric and B field is given by the Buscher rules, by the classical Buscher rules. And now the question is how this sort of finer topological data is related. And one can simply go to this diagram and impose these conditions, then trivialize and look what the local data is. It's a standard procedure. It's horribly complicated. I have like, it took me months to do this because the conditions are difficult. But then one obtains rules here and here, higher order Buscher rules for the non, for the topological data. So I can, let me just write them down. They, they look like this. So there is this dual IAJ. Then, so here are, Maura Carton forms, so recall that we are on on the correspondence space and double intersections. So theta hat is the Maura Carton form like on the on the second n torus directions. So that's how the second order Buscher rules look like. It's just a computation. It's a difficult, long computation, but it comes out from this geometrical definition. And then there is also a third order Buscher rules involving these Cs. So the Cs are your one valued functions. So rules look like this. It's very concrete. So there are functions on the Us, and they have, um, so the A hat is now in the second part here of the torus things. So it look, look like this. And you see that they mix everything. Okay, so they are somewhat more complicated. It's sort of very non-trivial in some way. Okay, so these are the the Buscher rules in general topology. Locally, the ordinary Buscher rules on the open sets. And then uh, in addition, these Buscher rules for the connection data of the gerb involving the connection data involving the transition functions of the torus, which are allowed to be non-trivial now, and involving here the transition functions of the gerbs, which are also allowed to be non-trivial. because they are transition functions of a gerb over u times tn. So the m is now u times tn. So the coordinates are axes from the u and an a from the tn. Yeah, right, we, here we are talking about local data for gerbs over torus bundles. That, that's why they have say, this additional torus factor. All right, so that's it. Thank you very much for your attention.